Hello everyone. My name is Andrew Hoffman. I'm a software engineer, a security researcher, and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. If you're a subscriber, then welcome back. Glad to have you. If you are a new visitor to this YouTube channel, then I'm also very glad to have you. And if it turns out that you want to see more of my content after this video, make sure to consider clicking the subscribe button. It's the red button to the bottom right of the YouTube video that you're watching. So today I'm coming at you with a tutorial once again in the Godot game engine, which is something I've been playing around with for a while. And this is a tutorial on how to build a complete side scroller from start to finish, a game akin to something like the older Metroid or Castlevania games. Now, I figure we just jump right into it. To get started, we're gonna need some art assets. And on the right here, you can see the jungle pack. This is produced by jesse-m.itch.io. Once again, I like to give a shout out. This is a free asset pack by jesse-m.itch.io and it's called jungle pack. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that this pack comes with a number of things, uh, including some ledges, it comes with a character, as well as some parallax background assets. These are assets that you expect to move at different rates to give you kind of the optical illusion of having depth in the backgrounds. So I've downloaded these assets and I put them in this assets folder here. What I'm gonna do is inside of Godot, I'm gonna start a new project. And inside of the Godot folder, I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it side scroller 2D. And I'm gonna click select current folder, create and edit. Now we have a new Godot project. And as you can see, it just has the default Godot template. So we're gonna click new 2D scene up here at the top and we're gonna click save and we're gonna create a new folder here and we're just gonna call it scenes. We'll call this main scene and click save. Now, if you watched any of my previous Godot tutorials, in particular, if you watched my tutorial that was called build a top-down 2D RPG in 20 minutes using the Godot game engine, you'll note that a scene is just a combination of nodes and scripts. So we're also going to need to put our nodes somewhere, our scripts somewhere, and of course the assets that make everything look pretty. So let's right click open in file manager on the root of this directory and let's create two more folders. We'll call one of them assets and we'll call the other one scripts. And then we can close this and if we go back to our editor you'll notice that we have a couple more folders. Now we can open up this assets folder by itself by right clicking once again and let's double click and let's drag some of the assets from the jungle art pack into this folder and click on Godot where it will start importing them. From here on out, we can work entirely within the Godot game engine. So we're within the scene main and you don't really see anything here. So let's create a child node for made main and let's call it a tile map. So we have a tile map node and you should probably watch another previous tutorial I made which is called Master the Tile Map Tool in Godot in 15 minutes it will teach you all of the ways to really rapidly assemble tile maps and beautiful maps that are 2D within the Godot game engine. Now inside of here, let's click cell and let's go to 3232 because these are 32 by 32 pixel assets. Let's create a new tile set to power this tile map. And let's go to assets, jungle tile set, drag jungle tile set in here. Scroll in a couple clicks with the plus button, click new tile, and then click over here for the grid snapping icon. We're gonna add a couple of tiles here. So we have the left, the center, we have a corner, and we're gonna to try to add an obstacle as well. So what obstacles should we add? Well, that is a great question. There are several options here. In this case, I think this would make a good obstacle and it meshes very well with the environment. Next, we have to add collision to all these tiles. So we'll go to the collision tab and we'll add square collisions. In my tutorial on the tile map tool, here, let's get this working, there we go. On my tutorial on the tile map tool, I covered adding not square collisions. So adding you know more advanced types of collisions and explain the pros and cons of these different collision types. We'll actually just do one polygon collision here. 
One thing to stay aware of is when you're dealing with polygon collisions, first of all, you have to disable the grid to get good snapping or to disable its snapping so you can get good mapping of the collision. One thing to be aware of is if your collisions aren't perfect, they can actually get the character stuck on them. So that's something to watch out for. But this should be enough tiles for us to generate a map. So if we go back here, let's rename this for the sake of organization to main scene and rename the tile map to ground. Now that we've added all the tiles to the tile map from the tile set, we can start decorating the ground a little bit and adding some obstacles along the way. And I was wrong about this particular tile. It doesn't actually mesh as nicely as I thought it would. So as you can see here, if I jump back into the tile set, Down here, there's actually some work that I'd have to do in order to get this to look really nice within the map. But I don't think that matters for now because we're not trying to make something pretty. We're just trying to get you started with Godot game development. So we'll just you know, add a couple of these in as obstacles. And the reason that we're going to have these as obstacles is because we're going to be implementing some jumping functionality. So let's save this scene. Now if we run this scene right now, the camera is going to default to the 0, 0 axis, which unlike what you might be used to is bottom right. So we won't be able to see much of this. We'll click select current scene. You can't really see, in this case you can't actually see anything because it's projecting the camera down here. So we're going to create a new camera. We're going to call it camera 2D. Create. And we're just going to set it to current and this is going to wrap around multiple axes. So then when we click play, we'll be able to see our map. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new scene and we're going to call this the player scene. There we go. We'll create it based on a kinematic body 2D, which is a object in Godot that automatically applies physics. And we'll add child nodes of type sprite. And we'll add another child node of type collision shape 2D. Now for the sprite here, we're not going to animate this sprite. Instead, we're going to go to character or character with outline, and we're going to choose this landing outline because the idle character, I believe I looked at it earlier, the idle character is actually an ace sprite file. So I'd have to open it in the ace sprite editor, which is a wonderful pixel art editor, by the way, I suggest looking into it if you want to make good pixel art. I'd have to open it in the editor and export it as a PNG because it's not pre-exported. So now we have this character. Let's jump back in the main scene and drop the player somewhere in the scene. Doesn't really matter where, that's just going to be his starting position. However, if we play, we can't actually do anything. We can't move the character at all. We just have some static images laid out. So we're going to go to project settings, input map. We're going to map a couple of commands. So we'll do a move left move right and a jump. We're going to bind left to the physical key A. We're going to bind right to the physical key of D. And we're going to bind jump to the physical key of space. And we'll just save this project. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to scripts, create a new script and call it player underscore controller. We're going to open it up in the editor cut out all this boilerplate code, extend kinematic body 2D, because that's what our player is, save it, and we're going to drag and drop it. After the player scene is open, drag and drop this script onto the kinematic body 2D, which we will rename to player. Now this is where we're, most of the magic is going to happen. Inside of here, we need to kind of define some data that we can use to control uh, the player. So we'll start with var speed, and we're going to set this equal to an integer of size 400. We're going to create another one called jump speed. It's going to be an int, and we can set it up to like minus 200. Gravity, another int, we'll set it to 200. And finally, velocity, which is going to be a vector 2. So what we're doing is setting up the default speeds and gravity is just a negative y-axis speed. Next what we're going to do is we're going to create a function, we'll call it underscore physics process delta. 
And we're going to call another function from within this called get input. We're going to pass it the delta. And get input doesn't exist, so we need to define that. So now we've defined two functions, and I'm stopping here because I want to explain the physics process delta. This is a built-in Godot function that will be called x times per second, with x being defined in physics common. So that's how many times you want the main loop typically to run in your Godot project. And as a result of that, it's not bound to the frame rate. So if your frame rate is 144, this thread is still running at 60 frames per second. And you've probably seen some older games where if the frame rate's faster, the gameplay is faster, and that's not an intended side effect. So next, every time that the get input is called, we want to change the velocity.x, so that's horizontal movement, back to zero. And if input dot is action pressed, so if we have move right pressed, in other words, if the move right button is clicked on the keyboard, D, in this case, we say velocity.x plus equals speed. And we can copy and paste that and do the same thing for the move left. However, in this case, we want to minus equals, so subtract speed from the player. In other words, the velocity.x, x-axis is left and right. We add if they're going right, we subtract if they're going left. Now, if we play this scene, well, not much is going to happen right now because we've attached this velocity variable. We've, we've defined it, but we haven't told the engine to do anything with the kinematic body 2D that's attached to the player. So what we're eventually going to have to do is we're going to have to call a function that's called move and slide, which will tell the game engine to move our player according to the velocity vector 2. But let's do that right after we define gravity. So how's gravity going to work? Well, gravity is a negative velocity on the y-axis, the vertical axis. So we're going to say velocity.y is going to be equal to, or in fact, plus equal. So we're going to add gravity multiplied by the delta. And we're going to do this on each physics frame. Finally, we're going to say velocity equals move and slide velocity and velocity.up, which is going to refer to the upwards facing velocity. So here it's saying velocity is not declared in the current scope. So that means we might have a typo. There we go. And the reason that we have to implement gravity is because our character is actually starting a little bit above the ground. If we're to jump back to the main scene and click here. So we actually want to pull him to the ground prior to allowing him to move. So here it's saying invalid index up on velocity vector 2. We really just want to say vector 2 dot up. There we go. There we go. So now you can see we move left and right. But we're actually falling through the earth. Now, why could that be? Well, the reason that that's occurring is because although we have collisions on the tile map, we don't have them on the player. So we have to define a shape for this collision. Rectangle shape 2D works fine, but a polygon shape would be better if you have more time and you're not making a tutorial. So let's add that and let's save that. Our player should fall to the ground and then we can move him left and right, but we still can't jump. So we don't have kind of the entire suite of movement that you'd expect in a platformer. So we go back to the player controller here, and the final thing we want to do is add another action. So what we'll do is we'll say if input dot is action pressed jump. What we want to do is say if is on floor. So if this is a built-in function that says if the bottom of this character's collider is touching something, then do x. So it's just a helper function. And in this case, we want to say velocity.y is going to be subtracted by speed. So we're basically just going to say we go up if jump is pressed and they're on the floor. So for this frame, we will take the speed up here and we will subtract it from the velocity. However, we probably just want to do jump speed. There we go.
And it should actually probably be a plus equals, given that jump speed is a negative. Or we leave jump speed as a positive and do it as a minus equals. Perfect. Cool. So now what's going on is whenever we click the space bar, we're applying a positive velocity right here, jump speed. We're subtracting it from, from the Y, allowing our character to go up and down. Now, after they've gone up, the gravity kicks in, and on each frame, get gravity is applied right here, where it says gravity or velocity dot Y plus equals gravity times delta. There we go. And of course, we have the horizontal movement as well. So as you can see, right here, we have the functioning core component of a side-scroller game. Now we probably can zoom in on this a little bit as well if we jump into the camera 2D, and this should be not a child of the ca camera 2D. The kinematic body, aka the player, should be a child of the root node. And this camera right here, we can go to transform, scale, um, let's see, perhaps it's not scale, but instead zoom. Let's see if we can find something called zoom inside of the camera object. Right here. So we call a zoom of 0.5 or maybe like 0.6 or maybe even 0.75, there we go. And we can call this a zoom of, I don't know, like, 0.5 or just 0.75 keep it keep it simple as you can see we've scaled it up a little bit here and we can move our character around our character is blocked by obstacles but has the capability to jump in order to get over said obstacles so that's the core components of building a 2d side scroller something akin to metroid or castlevania if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, bottom right hand corner, red button as of now. Um, and if you have any comments or feedback, leave them below the video in the comments section. Thank you for watching and hopefully I have more content for you pretty soon in the future.